Time to escape to Margaritaville, where people come to get away from it all and stay to find something they never expected. Jimmy Buffett's Escape to Margaritaville is a musical comedy featuring some of Buffett's most beloved songs and some original ones. It's playing all this week at the National Theater, but I got a chance to catch up with the undisputed king of cool vibes to find out all about the show and what he's been up to on the road. Welcome to Margaritaville. Well, congrats and welcome to D.C. Nice to be We're back excited here. Excited to have you back, and of course, bringing some some joy and some laughs. Yes, to the could, nation's town capital. Could, could, town could use a laugh or two. We you think? We could use a few. Yeah. We could use an escape to Margarita. A, a little escape to Margarita. Sure. Timing is everything. Oh, you're a smart man, there, <laughs> Jimmy Buffett. No, but we're excited to have it, and and I know. With your upbringing, your mom was a theater. She yes. loved the theater. So when you got to see your name and your song on Broadway mm -hmm. originally, and now going around the country, I mean that had to be kind of this full circle moment for it you. It absolutely was. You know, I thought a lot about her at that time because, you know, she and my dad lived long enough to see me have a little success, and they were always. Uh, supportive of what I was doing, though it wasn't what they really had in mind for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was supposed to follow the uh, the, the uh, nautical heritage of the ah. Buffett family, but so I did it in songs there as a poet, but I could still sail around by myself. Yeah. So, but yes, it was, a, it was, it was pr a pretty amazing thing and still I uh, always knew that the road was where the show would, would really uh, work because we've been lucky enough to, to be touring for almost 50 years and so Part of that process, <laughs> as you get a little older, is to slow down a little bit. So we're not going to as many cities as we used to do. You know, God, I would do 250 cities in a year at one time. You just finished a tour, right? Yeah, and that's just, kind of a little bit of a smaller venue tour. <clears throat> well, the road is, the, you're never not on tour. And, and that's the Pearl true. Reef, man, but we just finished, we, we just got back from Europe. We do a, we did a, a Ireland, uh, England, and France, which we do every year. What are parrot heads like in Europe? They are just as, if not more, uh, uh, energetic than here. All right. But there are a lot of uh, people from the States that come. It's become a bucket list item for parrot heads. And there's a great kind of connection between people who are our fans and, and between each other. Right. And more about that than an adulation of me or the band. I like the fact that there's a community out there. You have built this community. and. and it, I was curious because I'm from Florida, so we mm -hmm. kind of have a similar lifestyle. I mean, we're always on the boat, we're playing the songs, yeah. we're out there with our <laughs> tropical shirts, our lays on. But it's always fun to go, uh, especially here in D.C., and seeing the parrot heads <clears throat> that come out and get excited when you s hear Jimmy Buffett music. Well, this was always a very, very major uh, part of this whole process. When I made it to the point that I was hired by the cellar door to play the cellar door in Georgetown, mm -hmm. that was a huge move at that time in my career and the guy Jack Boyle who owned it. We became great friends and as I said uh, uh, to a lot of people, he was the first one to put the bug in my ear about doing a musical. And it wasn't, it was about Don't Stop the Carnival, Herman Wolk's mm -hmm. book, which I actually did do that. And, uh, but Jack was the one that planted the idea. And, okay. you know, he passed away just last year, but always was a great friend. But for him, seeing something in me that made him let, let him, me get on that stage, uh, you know, it started here. How much creative control did you have in this whole show? Well, I just, the thing of it was that was most important was to find writers who understood the culture. Mm -hmm. And were a part of it, they not just had to study it. They had to be, you know, and ironically enough, one of our writers is from D.C. It was very important that they knew the material and it would affect, it was part of their fun in their lives. Mm -hmm. And take those songs that meant as much to, more so to them in their lives than, you know, when you write them and you put them out there, they're everybody else's. Once they're out there, you know, it's True. great to have that. But they belong to you. They're not mine anymore. Their experiences, so their experiences were much more important than my participation in this. <laughs> but it's still, um, it had to be fun for you to kind of see it all come together and think of a, you know, that song. I never would have thought that Absolutely. that song would go with this storyline. It happened a lot of times. <laughs> Jimmy Buffett's Escape to Margaritaville is at the National Theater in downtown D.C. now through October 13th, one week only. So be sure to get your tickets. And for more information, please visit their website. Up next, we talk to the book writers for the musical and find out what it was like to work with Jimmy Buffett and bring his songs to life. We'll be right back.